Have you ever been thinking about what is actually the best way of protecting your engine from heat coming from your exhaust headers? Well, some sleepless nights for me resulted in me deciding to do a little bit of a back-to-back -back test between this. This is what I put on my exhaust headers in my last episode of my Porsche 964 build. Uh, I put it there to protect the, uh, the spark plugs and the coils that sit on the spark plugs from the excessive heat that you get from the headers. Uh, I wanted to compare this against this. So this is a uh, ceramic coating, Cerakote more, more specifically, coated on the inside, difficult to see, and the outside of course. So I wanted to see for myself which one of these two give the best performance. So what I'm preparing to do today is a little bit back-to-back uh, -back test between wrapping and ceramic coating. So look at that. I'm going to do a very scientific test today. I have a heat gun here, heat measuring gun. It's a little laser thing there and I have a heat gun. This will simulate heat generated and this one will actually take the data. I'm going to test them back-to-back. See what the difference is. Easy as that. First runner-up is the one I did in my last episode of my Porsche 964 build. It's just wrapped like this, the, the whole thing. Uh, so it's, it's essentially a, a layer of, of insulation. Uh, I did a, a little test in the last episode and it does insulate against heat. But on the other hand, you, you can have issues with oil and dirt dripping on this. It gets coated with this flammable such oil for example and could present itself with a hazard right here we go here's my test setup i have heat gun generating heat energy into the header i have my my measuring device right now it says a little bit below 20 celsius i'll translate everything to fahrenheit later uh, so generating heat in i'm going to plot every 15 seconds what the temperature is until it saturates and the saturation will be a measure of the heat conductivity of this one, the end temperature and how long time it takes before I get there. So, let's give it a go. This is gonna take a long time. After one minute and up to 64 Celsius. The thing is smoking. I don't know if you can see that, but the whole wrapping is actually, it's fumes coming out of it. And it's not, it's not the heat gun. It's, it's actually the, the wrapping itself that is giving off these, these fumes. It came up to about 160 Celsius. Uh, I'll put down what that is in Fahrenheit. Uh, and it evened out something after three, three and a half minutes, it was saturated, it didn't get hotter than that, which means that's the maximum temperature that this energy source can put into the system. So let's swap this for the coating. It does seem like the method might have worked. I'm going to do the second one. I'm going to do the same distance in from the heat source down there starting to, to measure just about now. And we're done. So the ceramic coating, I'll plot this in a graph so you can see the difference. It did behave a little bit different and I figured out that depending on what the angle of uh, where I put the heat gun, the temperature is actually quite different. It's hotter on the outside and I guess it's because the, the air is turning there, possibly. Uh, and it might also have to do with inaccuracies of the heat gun depending on the angle that you shoot it against the, the surface. But it does run 10 degrees hotter than, than the other one. Let, let me put a graph together and we, we, we see what we get. And there we go. Maybe not the most scientific way of doing this, but it is a good proxy for the heat conductivity or the relative heat conductivity between these two. We can see that on the blue graph, which is the wrapping, we can see that it planes out nicely in, towards the end of the graph. We can see that it's starting to get saturated 
and saturation is really what I was looking for here when the energy in gets to equilibrium with the energy coming out of the, the surfaces, right? So when that planes out and you can see that it's level, that's as hot as it's going to get based on this energy source. That is in no may, means a measure on how hot the header is going to be in the car because in the car it's so much more energy than what this heat gun can ever ever produce but it gives you an idea about which one is best over the other and as we can see here the coating does perform a little bit less uh, it does dissipate a little bit more heat through the uh, through the surface despite being coated on the inside as well as in the outside and i i really thought that that would mean that it would give you a little bit better um, in the end this is the safer choice because you have a, a surface that you can clean and you can take care of this one as cool as it might look this is susceptible to dirt as well as to, to sucking up oil and things coming out of the engine and that in the end could possibly be a fire hazard which is not very cool on a race car uh, in my build I'm gonna go for this. The best would be, of course, to combine the two. First coat and then wrap. But I, I think that's maybe a little bit more excessive than what I need to do. So I wanted to make a little bit pit stop, show you this as I did promise this in the last episode. Meanwhile, I'm getting ready to put the uh, limited slip differential into this car. I'm just finishing that car over there before I can get to that car. But that is just about done. And I do look forward to filming that episode, seeing you there. Thank you very much.